So in this video, we're going to finally wrap up our uh, state monad by actually actually working with a little bit of a very, very um, simple example. And the simple example is that um, we had defined earlier uh, basically what this uh, what this term term type is a term type is nothing but an algebraic algebraic data type that has these two value constructors uh, cons of end and um, and the value constructor over here is basically of a div of term and a term. All right. So given this given this type here, given this uh, given this term type over here. I'm now going to um, create something called an evaluator, and an evaluator in this case is nothing but uh, it's just a method. It's just a method that happens to take in a term. It takes in a term and it gives back as an output something that happens to be an m of uh, uh, in this case uh, integer. All right. So what this means is that uh, a term basically is just going to uh, 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 is just going to take the, the the method eval is just going to take in as an input a term and it's going to it's going to give it's just an it's just an evaluator method and all it does is uh, it'll just go to evaluate that term and it's going to give back the the integer output of it but as it does that it might have some side effect uh, as part of its computation and that side effect is basically represented by this monad by this monad m here okay and uh, uh, so this m again is going to be uh, how do I know that the, how did I even how did I even claim that this m is going to be a monad here the reason I'm claiming this m to be a monad here because I'm going to I'm going to make I'm going to assume that this m that I'm referring to in this case is basically this m over here that I had defined in my last video which is my state monad and again, so far this not this isn't even a state monad there. Just by that type there, the, the the reason this 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 entire thing becomes a state monad is the moment when I basically made it an instance of the monad type class here. Okay, so this is the this is the this piece over here in blue. This piece over here in blue is basically the the implementation of making my 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 state my type m of a in this case an instance of the monads monad type class okay so given all that can i can i actually now implement or at least at least complete this complete this eval method so let's go into the let's go into the value world and the value world i'm just going to say that eval of let's say what what what, what are some of the values that this term could be this term could be let's say let's take the simplest case cons of int here so uh, let's say the value is some cons of a and uh, what should this equal to? Well, this should equal to basically m of an integer. And what that means is this entire thing, this entire thing is going to equal to some kind of a value, some kind of a value that takes in as an input a state, and uh, uh, it gives you back a tuple. Now, I don't really have to do every piece of an implementation here because I've already made my my m in this case uh, the uh, uh, an instance of my of my monad uh, type class so i can simply simply in this case instead of doing everything over here i can simply say at this point at this point return 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 a and what is return a well return a is nothing but is this is this method that takes in a state s and gives you back a tuple that contains a first component a value in this case some kind of an uh, in this case, this a over here is going to represent my integer, okay, and uh, and in this case, s is going to be some kind of a new state that gets that gets put into my tuple as a second component. All right, just to complete my pattern matching, so I could then have eval of uh, in this case a uh, eval of diff of a term and a term, so I could have eval of uh, diff of uh, of a uh, in this case uh, t1 and t2 and uh, this is going to be equal to this this entire thing this entire thing is going to be equal to what here this entire thing is still going to be equal to in this case uh, uh, is still going to be equal to some kind of value which happens to be this monadic value m of m of integer but the way i'm going to way i'm going to complete this off is saying all right uh, uh, term one and term two basically these these guys over here t1 and t2 are basically my uh, my terms so if I if I call if I call eval if I call eval eval again on, on t1 if I call eval on t1 
this eval on T1 is going to is going to is going to result is going to result uh, um, in some kind. Uh, what does what does eval of T1 give back to me? Eval of T1 gives back to me right there. It gives you back some kind of a monadic value. So first thing what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to concentrate. I'm just going to concentrate um, uh, in in working on the on the purity aspect of my method meaning i'm just going to look at the computed value the integer i'm just going to ignore i'm just going to ignore for a time being the side effect here because i know that the side effect is going to be taken care of is going to get taken care of by the by the bind by the bind method so actually when i'm trying to put this together i like to think first thing in terms of um, in terms of uh, 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 without the side effect being taken into consideration so let's say eval of t1 eval of t1 results results uh, taking eval of t1 and um, and uh, using the bind operator using the bind operator and passing in this uh, passing in this method that takes in the computed value of eval of t1 which is some kind of an integer let's say that's represented in this in this variable x there that function that function in turn is going to call eval on t2 and eval on t2 gives you back uh, the integer of whatever this term t2 contains which is going to be represented in my variable y and finally I'm going to take my my, my two integers x and y here and I'm now in a position to perform a division here but before I even perform a division I mean one of the things I'm trying to do at least in this uh, in this representation of my of my evaluator is to count is to count the number of times the division is actually occurring the number of times I actually actually perform division in 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 my evaluation of my of my of my div of t1 and t2 so i'm going to say in this case this entire thing uh when i get my x and the y i'm now in the process i'm now in the position to actually perform one such division i'm going to perform one such division here and uh, because i'm in the process to, to perform one such division i'm just going to say all right uh, let's have let's have another uh, uh monadic value in which case this is my tick I'll just take this method tick from here. Okay, the type of tick, the type of tick is this is this monadic value. Okay, so I'm going to take a uh, type t tick tick here. Okay, and uh, again, if you are curious or at least would like to know this point, keep this in mind that that the, the, the m that I'm dealing with, the m that I'm dealing with in this entire in this entire in this entire uh, 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 expression over here in green is all referring to the same m which is basically this uh, this type signature which is my state monad okay the only thing that is differing is that in this case my b is this open parenthesis and the close parenthesis and the previous case uh, my a was actually and uh, and integer so i'm going to say tick at this point whatever the uh, the thing of tick is uh, this is going to result in some kind of a value that I'm really not concerned with. I don't really care about the value that comes from this tick over here because all I'm concerned with with the with is the state with the with the with the actual state expression, the state expression of my tick rather than the value. The value of tick is this piece over here, right? This is the actual the, the pure value, right? So uh, when I'm saying m of this open and closed parentheses, this is the actual value and this is the new state right there. So I don't, I really don't, I really don't, I'm really not concerned at this point with the, with the actual value there, but what I'm concerned with is the, is the, is the state part. So I'm going to say, all right, let's just ignore the value over here. And, uh, and uh, this entire thing, this entire thing is basically, is going to be, is going to be at this point, um, I can just say return, return of, uh, of my X and Y. So X divided by divided by y. Okay, now, sure, I might need to put a check for if y equals a zero and uh, things like that, but let's just concentrate on the state monad just for the time being. So, um, so a couple of interesting things here. Um, the first the first interesting piece is, um, uh, if, I, if I look at this entire expression in pink here, if I look at this entire, this entire thing in pink there, okay, so this is where the bind bind comes in. I'm just saying eval of t1 bind it with this method, with this method in f, right? This entire method in f, which is in pink here. What's happening is that eval of t1, eval of t1 is going to result in some kind of a monadic value, which is let's say m of a. Okay, and what this what this method does, what this method function f, what this what this function f does is it just it just extracts out the the a from this monadic value and sets x sets x in this case to whatever this 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 value happens to be, 
uh, in this type in this type uh, 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 of this type a this I'm just taking the, the 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 actual value devoid devoid of any 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 side effect and um, and uh, in this case if, if if a happens to be an integer if I'm dealing with m of integer here yeah, if I'm dealing with m of integer here yeah, so in this case my x over here is some value of type an integer and then again what I have here is another another bind operator coming into, into place here where eval of t2 eval of t2 in this case uh, just use a different color uh, eval of t2 this entire thing over here is nothing but something else of type let's say m m of uh, of an integer and uh, again I'm just extracting I'm just extracting in this function in this function in yellow let's say in this entire function in yellow let's call this function g in this function this entire function in yellow which is which is my function g I'm just doing the same idea I'm just 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 taking that integer value devoid of any side effect and uh, I'm going to have my variable y set to that to that to that uh, to that integer here okay and uh, likewise I now finally have my my third innermost function over here which is uh, let's use a slightly different color let's say let's just let's, let's use blue so let's say I have my new function over here which is my function h now my function h what does my function h do here okay my function h basically again it, the way it works is it looks at this it looks at this monadic value tick over here which is of type m open and close parentheses and the first thing this function h does is it just extracts the 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 value devoid of any side effect right and but i don't care about that value i don't care about this this this, this value and uh, that's why i'm just going to ignore it by having this uh, dash there and uh, this function basically then all it does it just takes x and the y uh, from my from my function uh, from my function f and g my x and the y and just going to perform a division but as I do this as I do this keep this in mind that what I'm actually doing in the process is I'm, I'm invoking I'm invoking the bind operator I'm invoking the bind operator and as I'm invoking the bind operator what is really happening is what is really happening is that the side effect the side effect of this this computation that is that is going on in green is is taken care of is taken care of by the bind operator so what does the bind operator actually do so what the bind operator is doing is um, if the best way to understand the bind operator is just to look at what this implementation does right there this implementation over here of the bind operator in case of this of this m which is my state monad is going to give you a big it's just going to tell you exactly how the how the side effect how the side effect m actually gets captured so 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 let's do that. Let's 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 see what was what's happening here. So eval of t1. Now the 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 actual value, the actual side effect in this case m over here is basically this entire is basically is this is this piece over here that's is a function that takes in a state and then gives you back a tuple of a comma some new state there. So first thing what's going to happen is this entire thing, this entire thing eval of t1, eval of t1. So if I if I just if I just rephrase this entire thing, if I just rephrase the first line. As something as uh, so uh, let's put the first line as eval of t1 and this function f right what is the what is the type of this the type of this value the type of this entire value the type of this entire value is nothing is nothing but it's going to be a function it's a function that takes in a state that takes in a state some kind of a state and gives it back some value a comma some new new state right that's what the that's what the type of function is so this entire thing is nothing but a function and because it's a function what this function is takes in the state s it takes in a state s and is what it's going to do is is going to give you back something that happens to be a tuple it's going to give you back something that's a tuple over here but before 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 you look at the output before you look at this tuple here let's just let's just figure out what is happening to the state here this state gets applied on my monadic value m here meaning the state over here that's being that's being, that's, that's that's being passed in this entire thing is a function takes in a state that state gets applied on eval of t1 okay so eval of t1 i'm going to apply that state okay because eval of t1 is nothing but again a monadic value that expects as an input a state so this state this state over here gets applied on eval of t1 all right so uh, in this example over here eval of t1 gets applied on some on some on some state on some initial state 
and the value the value of that is going to be a tuple the value of that is going to be a tuple which is right here the value that is going to be a tuple which is going to be a comma y and that a over here is basically being referred to by this variable x okay so uh, so i take that i basically take that uh, I, I i basically take that pure pure value a which is my x in this case but if you if you concentrate on the y the actual the actual new state that is computed that y is being passed into this function ka ka is nothing but another function that expects as an input parameter a new state so so what's happening is that the that the that the uh, that the that the new state that got computed the, the the new state that got computed from this expression from this expression eval of t1 okay so when i take eval of t1 and i pass in the initial state two things come out it comes out a tuple the one of the one of the first value of the tuple is this basically this this uh, uh in this case this uh this pure value x and out comes back a new state What's happening to that new state is it's also being passed in. It's also being passed in as a parameter to this function k a. What is my what is my function k a in this case? Okay, so k is in this case is basically this function right here. Okay, it is a function that takes in uh, x, but this entire thing, this entire thing over here. This maybe I should just clean this up a little bit um, because I know this is getting a little bit messy uh, and make it a little bit difficult to understand what what's uh, what's going on. Uh, so let me do this. Let me actually let me actually in my in my um, another video that's going to be follow up on this. I'm going to take this entire expression. I'm just going to take this entire expression. And just 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 cleanly cleanly put it out again on the top over here, and we can get rid of some of the things that we don't need on this uh, on this blackboard. So we can just at least from a high level understand the actual flow of this um, of this uh, of this method here.